Will GameStop Retro come to Canada? And do we even want it? I'm Scott. I'm Jen. We're Retro Rivals. And we're going to talk about GameStop and the differences between the American GameStop mm -hmm. and the Canadian GameStop. More specifically, we're going to talk about GameStop Retro. Now, I have been seeing a sprinkling of videos on YouTube of a GameStop Retro, and I was like, oh, I wonder if Canada will get it. So, being me, I, I had to dig a little deeper, and I did actually send an email to GameStop. Inquiring. Inquiring Are about, we going to get the retro GameStop here? Yes, and we will answer that by the end of the video, but we want to talk about differences as well in GameStop US and GameStop Canada. Now, GameStop used to be EB Games. It was bought out by GameStop in 2005. In Canada. In Canada. In Canada, this, it was EV Games. Yeah. We always said EV Games here up until, like, what, two years ago? Yeah, and, well, in 2021, they announced in July that they were going to be rebranding finally after buying it in 2005. Now, the UK rebranded almost immediately, where we stayed until 2021, and by the end of the year, they had planned to change all the signage, which they did, and we had a bevy of questions, which, you know, we found out just over the course of a few months when it rebranded. It's It's been about the same. Nothing has really changed. Other than the sign on the front of the building, yeah. I don't think anything has changed. It's the exact same thing. No. So as far as trade-in value goes, I don't think it's a whole lot different than the US. I did do some research before we came down to shoot the video. Yeah. And honestly, it's never been good. It's yeah. never going to be good. Never and been. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Whether they have the retro or not, it's just not a great option. We have better options here. Oh. I'm not taking a retro game. I'm not taking a game there to trade. No, the one time you did look at taking a game there was many years ago. Yeah, this was back in PS2 days when yeah. we were still taking, like, because I think PS2 was the console at the time, or yeah. maybe 360. Yeah. So I took a PS2 game in there and they offered me 50 cents on it. And I was like, it's not worth the price of gas coming here. Yeah. I'll, I'll just keep the game then. Exactly. Okay. It's, it's shocking to think what we would get in trade at GameStop and what we get at our local pawn shops. Now our local pawn shops probably do better than what most people are used to. And honestly, we're very fortunate in that fact that I think at, if you do cash trade, it's, I think it's like 50%. And if you do a trade for another game, I think it's closer to yeah. 70%. I think it is. Which is fantastic. That's really good value for your money. And because they do it that way, they turn over a lot of product. So we're yeah. constantly seeing new games at our pawn shops. Our thrift stores are not great, so we won't get into that. And there's no trade value there anyways. That aside, I will let Scott take this next topic because I feel like he has a lot to say about the selection of games, specifically what you can get as a day one game. Okay, I don't know what it's like at, at your GameStop. Yeah. At our GameStop, if it's not a AAA title, um, you're not getting it unless you pre-order it. Yeah. Flat out, I do believe we've had some discussions with other people online and they say the same thing. Yeah. That if you don't pre-order your game, you're not getting it. Because I missed out on a game, I literally missed the pre-order by a, a day or yeah. something like that. And there, I'm like, well, will I be able to? Will you guys get extra copies in the store? No, we're just getting the pre, just the pre-order. So I'm like, what? Are, are you serious? So then we got on the phone right there in the store. Uh, oh, Amazon. I'm like, this is a great business, guys. I'm like, I would much prefer to come here in my local area and yes. buy a game. But you're not even throwing me a bone. No. Like, and if it's a AAA game, there might be some extra copies. Yeah. If you, it's an indie only, game, absolutely not. Yeah, so so the only games in the store really are stuff that has been traded in. And they only take consoles like PS4, PS5, and yes. Xbox One, and like basically this gen, last gen. Yeah, that's, that's it. Switch. That's all they take. That's yeah, it. that's they just take that for now. And uh, the prices aren't great. 
No. I never buy a used game there. Never. No, it's not our best option. No. Our pawn shops are still the best option. And eBay's still a better option than that. So when you walk in there, you see like the walls are just lined with games, but uh, most of those games are displayed. Most of the yeah. games are games coming out, too. Yeah, it's like, oh, pre-order this. And they'll have like three rows or whatever, maybe two rows, maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe it's two rows of like, let's say Resident Evil 4, for example. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I, that's, and you grab it and it's not even a real game cover or nothing. It has a different back on it and it's, that's just for pre-orders. And yeah. once it's pre-orders done, that comes off the shelf, I assume, and they put the next one up there. Yeah, they put the next one up. The only games that are in the store are games that happen to get traded in against maybe a pre-order. Exactly. As far as merchandise, now, this doesn't matter as much for us, but it may for some people. I was really not impressed with the amount of different gaming merchandise you can get in our store. Now, our two stores we have in our local area are rather on the small side, so that might play into why we don't have as much merchandise. I did notice that you can go online and you can get it, but sometimes it's just, it's kind of like going into a, a checkout and you're seeing stuff on the side of the register and you're like, <laughs> oh my God, I want that. Now we go there and sometimes we're going for a game and we see a cool shirt, but there's, there's very few shirts. I want games. I don't want merchandise for I know, the most but part. some people do. Like maybe you're buying yeah. your favorite game. I didn't. I do know when I checked out the online store, they did have Silent Hill 2 Remake Pyramid Head t-shirts for like $25.99. I was like, that's super cool. But I can guarantee you, I'm not going to walk into my local GameStop because they won't have it. They will not have it. No. I can order it online, but I guarantee you they're not going to have it. And if they do, they're going to sell out day one. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they're going to have no size small. Let's be honest. <laughs> I'm not, I'm going to have to get an extra large. So we're not going to leave you guys on the hook too long. Will there be a GameStop retro in Canada? Well, when I did reach out, they said there's not plans anytime soon. That means to me that we're going to have to see a lot more desperation from GameStop before we ever get one. And I'm wondering if you guys are feeling the same way we do, that the introduction of GameStop Retro is a little bit reeking of desperation. I, I feel the whole, I, it's not long before GameStop itself, unless they really change things. Yeah. Like physical games are on their, on their way out. Like, yeah. When the next gen comes out, I would be shocked if they have physical games. Yes. And what's GameStop going to do? Sell you a t-shirt? Yeah. And ah. let's be perfectly honest. If you're going to buy a retro game, you're probably not going to do it from GameStop. First off, their employees aren't well trained on what to detect as far as fake games go. We've been seeing that pop up on YouTube. A friend of ours bought, knowingly bought, a re reproduction game. Yeah. Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, Leaf yeah. Green. And I just don't understand if you're going to provide this as a service, why aren't you doing it in a way that you can guarantee the consumer is getting something authentic? So why would we want this? Why would we want this when I can, again, go to my local pawn shop and they have the tools and the trained people to make sure the games are not fake yeah. it just it just seems logical to do it that way i just think that this move kind of it kind of reminds me of blockbuster when blockbuster started to do some they like they're like okay let's time to rebrand time to you know offer a 10-day rental if you spend this much money and you bring it back or buy a membership and or well whatever it just feels like this is kind of like clinging to the last opportunity of keeping this franchise alive. They're nickel and diming it, trying to stay alive. Yeah. Um, like, they, they already got out of that business of yeah. the retro games. And to jump back in now, as it's cooling down, yeah. maybe if they had it jumped in two, three years ago, when it was like crazy hot yes. and things were rising drastically. It could have made a difference. They, uh, they jumped on the bandwagon too late. Too late. I mean, games are cooling off at the like prices are cooling and off. And we're not saying that from a perspective of we don't know any better. We're seeing it as we look at our price charting guide of what we own, what it used to be worth, 
and what it's worth now. And we're seeing a slow decline of especially the retro titles. And of course there's going to be a little bit of you bought new titles and then those are gonna decrease in value, but that's not where the bulk of our value of our collections in. It's mostly retro games and it's cooling ever so slightly all the time. Yeah, I'm seeing it in stores also. Like yeah. I just mentioned today to you for games, I was like, are they that low now? Because they were a lot higher. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, we're noticing them in our local pawn shop, so. Yeah. What do you guys think about a GameStop Retro in Canada or GameStop Retro in general? Like I said, there's no set in stone. Yes, they will do it. They, they said not for right now. Maybe that leaves a possibility open for like, maybe it'll happen. They haven't said yes, they haven't said no. They said just not right now. And they said they'd send my feedback to... Uh, they blew you off. Yeah, they basically <laughs> blew me off. I, was, I was hoping to get care. more out of this, but it was a very like very short generic, two line, generic. please go away. Yeah, very generic. And yeah. If, yeah, in my opinion, do we need a GameStop retro? I don't think it brings any no. thing to the table. No. no, like, yeah, I could say that for our area, we have a pretty good yeah. supply of, or a lot of local stores that sell retro games. Yeah, so and we're very I can't say fortunate. that, but if you, all you have is GameStop, I can see why you'd want it. Yeah. But. I'm never gonna trade anything there to get something else because no. they just, it's highway robbery. It, exactly. It's been so. the same business practice for 20 years now. Yeah. So let us know what GameStop is like in your area. Would you like a retro GameStop? What are the pros and the cons in your mind? We'd love to know in the comment section or do a video in response. It's, it's a really divisive topic because I just, it's not for us, but it might be for you, and I would love to know why. So with that being said, I think we've covered everything we can do with GameStop, and until next time, game on.